The Baltimore Ravens and Washington Commanders face off in week six in what has quickly become one of the most anticipated matchups of the season. We talk about the biggest matchups to watch, players to watch, key storylines, and so much more coming up on this crossover Thursday edition of both Locked on Ravens and Locked on Commanders. You are Locked on NFL Crossover, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into a crossover Thursday edition of both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders. I am the host of Locked On Ravens, Kevin Ostriker. He is the host of Locked On Commanders, David Harrison. And we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for tuning in today, making both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders your first listen each and every single day. Free and available for you, all podcasting platforms that includes in video form on YouTube, where you can like and subscribe to the channel. Also, in audio form, you can follow along wherever you get your podcast. Today's crossover Thursday edition of both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. It's Lamar Jackson. It's Jaden Daniels. It is one heck of a matchup we are about to witness in week number six. And David, I'm I'm still so amazed at how quickly this has become a thing. And this is honestly because of the ascension of Jaden Daniels. Now we have two incredible quarterbacks going head to head. This is a matchup that so many people cannot wait to watch. And I'm certainly included in that list. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, this is this is a game that I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, I, I did a little bit of a live hit uh, with AB, the local ABC station. And uh, after the uh, the commanders win, over the Cleveland Browns, and I, I specified I'm staying away from every stranger. I'm staying away from everybody's kids. I'm taking nothing but vitamin C all week long. Like I'm, I am not missing this game. Um, you know, come come hell or high water, this is this is going to uh, be something that I'm going to see. So, you know, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. To be quite honest with you, you know, and when you have a rookie quarterback coming into a situation like this, there's obviously a lot of variables uh, that are going to dictate what happens in this game. But bottom line is, this is just one of the games of the year, if not. And we'll see how it turns out, right? But but there's a lot of people who are speculating this could end up being uh, one of the games of the year. And and for the Washington Commanders, if it's going to be the game of the year, it's going to have to be obviously because they're at least competitive, if not being able to win this game. And the ability to tackle is going to be paramount to the Washington Commanders staying competitive and potentially pulling off uh, an upset win here. And that's something that fortunately for them, they've actually been doing. Uh, on defense fairly well as, as of late uh coach dan quinn said that you know he tallied he and his staff tallied four missed tackles in the win over the cleveland browns where they had like something like 14 or or 12 or something like that in the weeks prior uh not the Car- cardinals game but leading up to arizona cincinnati and, and the and the cleveland browns game this this latest kind of really good run they have a four game wing streak the new york giants game wasn't as sexy as the other ones were but these last three games specifically they've been playing a lot better getting a lot more pressure and that's really the key here they've got to be able to contain lamar jackson prevent him from taking over the game with his arm and his legs but also derrick henry i mean i don't i don't even know i don't even know what it feels i can't even compare a life experience to what it must feel like to be in front of derrick henry and have to take that kind of contact but look that's what you get paid for, right? If you're a defender, like you might be a small guy, you might be a big guy, big guy. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you get paid to go out there and stand in front of guys like Derrick Henry. You can't waffle on it. You can't. Oops. I tried to grab his ankle while I fell to the ground. You have to go out there and you got to put it on the line because if not, he's going to run away with the game literally and figuratively. Yeah. And the Ravens are coming off of one of the games of the year already against Cincinnati. And now we got right back on the saddle for another one here against the commanders. But you're exactly right, David. And when we look at this Washington team, I think it all does start with Jaden Daniels. And I love in this matchup, Jaden's a guy that is already seems like he's wise beyond his years and mm-hmm. a guy that already understands the game so well. He's a low mistake player. And I love that quarterback matchup too. two really low mistake quarterbacks in Jane Daniels and Lamar Jackson, but it's been a treat being able to watch him evolve mm-hmm. over these first five weeks. Obviously he is, he doesn't have all the experience Lamar Jackson has, but he is already proving that, for the long haul, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So when you're going up against the Ravens defense like this, Dave, when you look at Jaden Daniels, what does he need to do in order to be able to get the better of them? Because Baltimore has been a little susceptible this season, especially in the past game. 
Yeah, honestly, he needs to do what he's been doing already all season long, and that is making smart decisions, quick decisions, timely decisions, right? Don't let pass rushes that don't necessarily get home all that well on their own have time to get home because it, it's like finding an open receiver downfield. Any pass rusher, because of the rules and because of the lack of ability to hold and all that stuff, like pass rushers will eventually get home if you stand there in the pocket and allow them to do so. So what Jaden has been really good at uh, and something that really – was on full display against the the Cleveland Browns and Miles Garrett um, was his ability to get rid of the ball quickly or get rid of himself in the pocket quickly, right? Scramble, extend plays or get downfield. And where we're really starting to see this major development with Jane Daniels from weeks one through week five is in week one, essentially it was stand in the pocket and deliver the ball or run. There was really no extend plays, keep my eyes downfield and stay alive as a passer. And the internal clock was incredibly accelerated. Then you get to week two, you see it a little bit better. Week three is better. Week four is better. Week five is really where everything kind of comes to a head. And it all started off in that first drive. There's, there's a deep ball pass to Terry McLaurin where Jaden Daniels escapes the pocket to the right side of the field, extends the play, keeps his eyes downfield, keeps his arm alive, fires a ball downfield. I mean, and if you watch that play, you just see how the, how much arm strength, this young man has in, in, in his shoulder and gets that ball down there to Terry McLaurin beautifully. Now where he faltered later on in that drive was the interception at the one yard line where he's being a little bit greedy, trying to fit the ball to Zach Ertz uh, and, and, and coverage that he already knew as soon as he threw the ball, he knew he shouldn't have thrown that ball, take the points, live for that. We'll live with that field goal. It's going to be okay. And that's, that's just the further maturation of a rookie quarterback. Right. But he's a guy that has been very steady, very professional and very smart, with the football. And again, going back to miles Garrett and the Cleveland Browns, look, Brandon Coleman, rookie left tackle got the start, his first NFL start. And it's against miles Garrett. He went up against him one-on-one only four times. They knew the Washington commanders knew they needed to give their rookie some help. But in those four reps, Brandon Coleman actually won two of those reps in my book. He lost two of those reps as well, but because Jaden day was making timely decisions, even when miles Garrett beat Brandon Coleman one-on-one, he didn't get a sack, didn't get a hit, didn't get a pressure all day long, didn't register a stat for only the second time in his career. That's what he needs to do against not just the Baltimore Ravens, but every defense that he faces from here on out. Yeah, and the thing is, look, Jaden Daniels is Jaden Daniels. I know, David, one of the biggest storylines this week has been, oh, well, is Jaden Daniels the new Lamar Jackson? Is he a baby Lamar Jackson? And Jaden Daniels spoke to that on Wednesday, saying that, he wants to be known as Jaden Daniels, you know, not the next such and such, which I agree. Lamar is his own player. Jaden Daniels is his own player. And that's exactly what it's what makes these two quarterbacks great. And Zach Ertz even got in on the action saying that it's a mm-hmm. disservice to both guys to compare one to another because Lamar has been in the league for a while. He's a two time MVP and Jaden Daniels has already shown so much, but still has a long, great career ahead of him. Now on the defensive side of the ball for the commanders, David, you mentioned a little bit, you got to tackle if you're Washington. You absolutely have to. And we've seen a defense that has struggled a little bit in certain areas this season, but obviously this team has been able, especially with Jaden, to overcome that. What are your biggest storylines on the defensive side of the ball? Because Baltimore's coming off of a 41-point performance on the offensive side of the ball where they just put up points in a hurry. Yeah, because not only do you have to be able to tackle well against the Baltimore Ravens, both from the running back perspective and the wider or the quarterback perspective, but you got to stay sticky in coverage, right? Because Lamar Jackson has honestly one of the longest, like getting ready to do my studies at the Baltimore Ravens. I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, Lamar Jackson, he's only been sacked five times this year. He's got to be getting the ball out lightning quick. I go and I look at the next gen stats for the NFL and uh, he's at the second longest time to throw of any quarterback starting the national football league. So now I'm like, all right, well, his offensive line just has to be dominating people. And certainly his offensive line is doing a lot of good things, or he's got to be throwing outside the pocket a lot. 88% of his passes are still coming from inside the pocket. So the answer is his offensive line is doing a really great job. So I don't know that I expect the Washington commanders to register a whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of sacks against Lamar Jackson, but the key is going to be keep him in the pocket, try to put as much pressure on him as you can, and then be sticky in coverage. Zay Flowers is going to make that very difficult, right? Isaiah Likely is going to make that very difficult. Mark Andrews is still nothing to sneeze out. Rashad Bateman, you know, I think it still has some talent in him, obviously. So this secondary has been suspect at times. What's really helped the secondary look better over this three-game winning streak and even the four games total, even though Malik Neighbors had a pretty good day against them, is that pass rush getting home. If this pass rush can't do that against a very good Baltimore Ravens offensive line, 
the pressure turns up on those cornerbacks. And, you know, Mike Sanders still has moved to the outside and looked better there than Emmanuel Forbes. Ben St. Juice has been the best guy on the field. No, Igbenogany has been better in the slot than I think a lot of people expect him to be. But can they do it for 60 minutes and prevent Lamar Jackson uh, from, from finding open targets? That's the question. Yeah huge it's a huge part of it especially because there there is a multi-layered step plan to getting Lamar Jackson on the ground this first you have to win against this Baltimore offensive line then you have to be able to keep Lamar in the pocket if you do get home because if you don't yeah. he runs around on you we obviously saw even if he fumbles a snap he can still take that thing stiff arm you <laughs> run around and and chuck it up to a receiver who is in the end zone so it's a multi-step yeah. plan but that's what makes this game so exciting two quarterbacks that have so much ability in so many different ways. But coming up in the second part of Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders on this crossover Thursday, we'll flip the field, talk about some matchup storylines to watch on the Ravens side of the ball. So be sure to stay tuned. Plenty to get to on both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders. First, this show is sponsored by Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. So here's how to use it. First, drink the pre-alcohol. For best results, make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep. And then step three, enjoy tomorrow. Wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day go to zbiotics.com slash lockdown nfl to learn more and get 15 percent off your first order when you use lockdown nfl at checkout zbiotics is back to the 100 money back guarantee so if you're unsatisfied for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked remember to head to zbiotics.com slash lockdown nfl use the code lockdown nfl at checkout for 15 percent off and this show is brought to you by Game Time. And for me, I, I love going to live events personally. I love going to sports events, whether it's concerts, theater, comedy. I've attended a lot, and I try to go to a couple a year to make new memories. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters up the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Plus, they had a great 50% off Labor Day offer for Diamondbacks and Dodgers last month month and so obviously for this Ravens and Commanders game if you're looking for a great option to go and find deals game time has you covered they have super deals and other tiers of deals that can make your experience really easy plus they have a ton of great features on their app like game time picks seat views lowest price guarantee game time ticket coverage and so much more Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code Lockdown NFL. Spelled L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. We are back. Our second segment of both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders. Kevin Ostriker, Locked On Ravens, chopping it up with David Harrison of Locked On Commanders ahead of this anticipated week six matchup. David, not sure we were saying that when the schedule first came out, but this (laughs) ascension of Jaden Daniels has made this absolutely must watch TV to the point where you started to hear the the primetime callers trying to get this game on primetime, but obviously CBS was not giving this thing up no matter yeah. what. There, Hands there was, off. There no shot. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. If I was CBS, I'd say, get get away from me. We're taking this, and we're, we're getting all the benefits from it. But yeah. we talked about Washington and, and the keys and the matchups to look at. Now, flipping over to the Baltimore side of the ball. Actually, I'll start on defense because there was a big story yesterday, David, for this Ravens team. The Ravens defense has struggled a bit so far this season in a couple different areas. Run defense, they're still great. But the pass defense has been a struggle, miscommunications, poor timing, poor play calling. So the Ravens actually brought in Dean Pease, who was Baltimore's Super Bowl winning coordinator back in 2012, 2013. He's now in a senior advisor role. He's going to be helping Zach Orr, who was their first-time defensive coordinator, first-time play caller at any level. And this has kind of made waves across the Baltimore side of things because it's like, whoa. Does this mean Zach Orr wasn't doing a good enough job? Do they not trust him? What's going on here? I don't think it's any of the whole they don't trust him type deal, but I just think, hey, it's a young guy who is a young coordinator, has had an experience, and for a Baltimore team that has Super Bowl aspirations, 
any veteran advice you can get from a guy who's been there and done that is great because we've seen it. Marlon Humphrey didn't practice on Wednesday with an ankle injury for this team. We're going to see what that progress is like throughout the week. He was seen with a boot on his foot, leaving the locker room in Cincinnati. That'd be a big loss for a team that already is struggling. Marcus Williams has been one of the worst graded safeties this year. There were also rumblings, David, earlier in the offseason for Baltimore that John Harbaugh was going to get Jerry Rothberg, who was their special teams coordinator back in the day, in in like a game management type role. And John Harbaugh's game management has been a little questioned over the course of the year this year. And honestly, in years past, that didn't come to fruition. But it seems like they're doing the same thing for Zach Orr. So the key for Baltimore's defense here is what Jane Daniels doing what he's doing. Terry McLaurin has founded over these last couple of weeks, obviously a bit of a struggle over the first two, just in terms of stats and mm-hmm. getting those receiving yards. But hey, him and Jaden have established a connection. You have to be able to cover, even covering tight ends. We know that Zach Ertz is a steady veteran presence. You know, he might not go for 10 catches for 150 yards and a touchdown, but he can find the soft spots in your defense and use his veteran savvy to work back to Jaden if there's ever a problem. To me, yeah. the key for Baltimore's defense, I don't necessarily expect a huge day from Washington on the ground with their running backs, and we'll see how the Brian Robinson injury progresses over the week. But mm-hmm. I think through the air, you have to stop Jaden Daniels because he has just been incredible. It's Washington strength against what has been Baltimore's weakness so far. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Like you usually look at a rookie quarterback competition, you know, or when a rookie quarterback is your competition, you kind of think, okay, make make them lean on him to win the game and, and you're probably going to be okay. But in this scenario uh, that actually potentially could be your downfall, you know, and, and one of the things the Washington commanders have done a really good job of is their no huddle offense is, you know, using the same personnel packages, but using them in different alignments. So you might see five, six plays with say 13, well, not 13 personnel, but 11 personnel or 12 personnel. And when you, you see those five plays, you're going to see five different alignments at the same time. And, and at the end of the day, even if you end up with a scouted look that you've seen before or a play that you've seen them run before, can you recognize it on the fly in real time? And can you communicate it to everybody in real time before they snap the ball? And, and that's something, you know, Coach Harbaugh mentioned that on Wednesday to the media. He notices the Washington Bears have done a really great job of creating space. And that is absolutely what this team is doing is they're basically making you pick your poison and leaning on Jaden Daniels to make those smart decisions. Are you going to stack the box and or, or play man coverage and stick on their receivers and all those things. Well, if you do, they're probably going to run you out of, out of space and Jane Daniels is going to gash you for some rushing yards, or you can play zone and fill all kinds of space over the field and make sure you have a guy in every quadrant and do all that kind of stuff. Well, these receivers and these tight ends are really good at finding space. And Jaden is really good at anticipating where his guys are going to be and delivering the ball timely and accurately. And that's really what has been frustrating. A lot of defenses. I actually just wrote this for commander game day on sports illustrated where every other defense has got to face this Washington Bears offense right now is hoping like, Hey, you're the Ravens. You're supposed to be Super Bowl contenders. You're a, you, you have a very strong defensive identity over the years. I know that the passing defense especially has struggled this year, but everybody's kind of looking like, Hey, you're the Ravens. Like if, if the bears are going to figure it out, the Panthers are going to figure it out. The Eagles, the Cowboys are going to figure it out. They want to look at the Ravens and say, what did you do? So if they can't figure it out and if they let the Washington commanders get loose to score 30 plus points for the third straight game this season, uh, you know, that could be a problem. That could be a problem for the Baltimore Ravens, and that's certainly the key uh, to the Washington Commanders being able to, to to potentially get an upset here. Yeah, Washington's passing offense is fourth in terms of net yards per attempt this season, so obviously they are throwing the ball, getting big plays, and timely first downs as well to be able to extend drives and make sure that defenses have to either stay on the field and tire themselves out or – Gives the opportunity for the Washington defense to rest, which I think is really Mm -hmm. important, at least in this game, David, because when you talk about this Washington defense right now, again, they're they're a middling pass defense in terms of net yards per attempt. They're at 17th there. But where I'm really looking at is the run defense. They're Mm -hmm. second to last in terms of net yards per attempt given up. We know this Baltimore, it, it might shock, it shocked me when I heard the stat for the first time. But this Baltimore rushing offense, David, is on pace to break their 2019 totals, which was already a historic unit. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with the fact that this team did bring in Derrick Henry, a 30-year-old Derrick Henry. He's lo- he's out there looking like 26-year-old Derrick Henry. And that's yeah. been one of the really key parts of this Ravens offense. I think it's un- – I don't even know. It's one thing watching him for Tennessee for all those years. But it's another thing when he comes over to, to your side and it's like, whoa. This is a whole different thing because with Lamar and Derrick Henry, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins played really well for Baltimore. Mm -hmm. But it's just 
the gravity that Derrick Henry has and you pair mm. that with the gravity Lamar has, you always kind of leaned Lamar's way if you were a defense to where we have to be able to stop Lamar. We're going to put more stock into that as opposed to a Gus or J.K. But Derrick Henry is like, man, we don't know where the heck to go. And mm. that's all this misdirection they've used, zone reads they've used. They've worked yeah. play action off of it. And that's the thing that I love with this offense is they're now finding identities that – they didn't even have when Gus and JK were there. Yeah. Look, you know, a lot of people look at Derrick Henry and they think, man, big bruising, strong running backs, just going to run dudes over. And, and a lot of that gets associated with a gap, B gap runs. And that's certainly there. That's certainly part of his game. But coach Quinn pointed out uh, to us on Wednesday as well. Like he's got a great stiff arm, which is part of the power game. Right. But it keeps guys away from him. And he's got a really great jab step as well. And I was surprised uh, a little bit in my film study to learn that uh, most of Derrick Henry's explosive runs have come on the perimeter. Yeah, definitely. And coming up with the final part of the show, David and I will talk through what the commanders and the Ravens have to do in order to win this game. A big week six matchup on the horizon between Baltimore and Washington. Stay tuned. Still so much that I've been to on this crossover Thursday of both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders. First, this show is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So you get a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You're started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So this Ravens and Commanders game has so much, I think, alert to him. Jaden Daniels, Lamar Jackson and these two high-powered offenses. So when you actually go and look at the line, the Ravens are six-and-a-half-point home favorites. So if you like this from the Ravens' side as the favorites, if you like it from the commander side as the underdog, be sure to head over to FanDuel to choose your side. So again, just visit FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. We are back with Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders with David Harrison of Locked On Commanders. I am Kevin Ostriker of Locked On Ravens. Just a reminder here that this crossover Thursday edition of both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders is brought to you by PrizeBase. Go to PrizeBase.com slash Locked On NFL. Use code all over case Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly me when you play $5. And be sure to subscribe to both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders on YouTube and follow along wherever you get your favorite podcast. Now, David, there are so many things that have to go right for any NFL team to win a game, especially in a high powered shootout, which I feel like is the prediction right now. A lot of people are expecting a lot of points and maybe not so much defense in this game, but (laughs) from the commander side of things, what are three things they have to do in order to pull out this victory? Oh man. I think first and foremost, you got to play uh disciplined defensive aggression, right? You want to be aggressive. Joe Witt Jr. Dan Quinn, they want an aggressive defense. So you got to, but you got to be disciplined in that aggression while you're, while you're trying to do that sticky coverage. We already kind of talked about it a little bit, but I think two times on defense, defensive d- discipline, aggression, sticky coverage, and then on offense, exploit the middle of, of that Baltimore Ravens defense, run the ball at least 17, 18 times, keep them honest, make sure the Baltimore Ravens understand you might have a really good run defense, but you got to use that thing because that's going to help you exploit the middle of that coverage. And that is where I think the uh, Washington Commanders can make their money uh, the most and, and help them uh, try to get an upset win. Now, if Humphrey is out, it changes things a little bit. Maybe you target the perimeter a little bit more, but still want to use that middle of the defense if you can. And that to me is a really big one because... At this point, with this Ravens defense, they, they've had all sorts of issues on that side of the ball. And in the secondary, it's part of, I mentioned Marcus Williams, Brandon Stevens, who had a great year for them last year. One of his fatal flaws is he doesn't turn his head around on the ball. So he had a great pass breakup on T. Higgins. He had no idea that ball was coming. He just kind of stuck his hand up and got lucky with it. The ball kind of jots out there. So if Jaden is able to kind of confuse this Ravens defense a little bit, That's one area that I really, really think Washington could exploit. But here's the other part of this, David. Washington or any other team with a rookie quarterback, second-year quarterback, it's been tough if they've seen this Ravens defense for the first time for them to get momentum. Baltimore, the stat is 15-2, and I believe it is, against rookie quarterbacks at home under John Harbaugh. So this defense is complex despite whoever it is, Don Martindale, Dean Pease, Mike McDonald, Zach Orr, there's always a level of complexity. So when I'm thinking about the Ravens, 
I'm like, well, first of all, you got to make Jaden Daniels uncomfortable. Confuse mm-hmm. Jaden Daniels, get him out of his element, and make him second guess himself on some of those throws. I think that's a big one. I also think establishing the run early is going to be really key for this team because, again, you want to be able to use your offense to its potential. Fast start kind of goes in there. And I've been saying it every week because I think now we have to say it here in Baltimore, 60 minutes of football. This game is not three quarters long. We know the narrative around Baltimore. And honestly, last week they flipped it on its head against Cincinnati. But those three things to me for Baltimore are the keys. Yeah, you know, I I think that first one is going to be really challenging, right? And I think that's kind of the trick here is who is going to be the first one to figure out how to make Jaden Daniels uncomfortable, right? Because the thing about trying to make Jaden Daniels second guess himself is he doesn't second guess himself. Like that's just kind of part of his makeup is he believes his eyes. He sees what he sees. If he sees an opening, he goes for it. If he doesn't see an opening, uh, he he doesn't go for it and he goes for a different opening, right? He doesn't sit there and try to wait and then figure it out. Well, maybe, maybe that's going to come open or maybe that's going to do this or maybe that's going to do that. He doesn't play those games. He's very matter of fact about it. And, you know, the analogy that I've used uh, about him, Commander's fans are going to get sick of me using these analogies, but I keep using them on crossover Thursdays because that's what Ravens fans haven't heard it yet, um, is if his house was on fire, he would gather all of his, his, his collectibles, all the things that he thinks are valuable in his home, and he would just stroll out the front door like nothing was happening because that dude has no panic in him. He's got no hurry in him. Now, again, week one did see that clock accelerated, but it wasn't a panic thing. It was just basically a rookie quarterback getting used to the speed of the NFL game going up against a very aggressive defensive coordinator in Todd Bowles. I'm actually very curious to see if the Ravens blitz more. I actually thought, I think it's a little bit of reputation over the years, but I actually expected when I started diving into this matchup that the Ravens were going to be one of the more blitzing teams in the league, but that's actually not the case. They like to bring four rushers a lot. They like to mix it up by having two down linemen, three down linemen, and then bring an extra guy who's standing up from somewhere else or an extra two guys from somewhere else. And that's definitely a way to get creative with it. But I'm curious to see if maybe they blitz a little bit more in this game than they have in other games. Um, I think the, the blitz rate against Patrick Mahomes in week one was a little bit higher than the, the blitz rate all season long. So that that could be an indication that that may, might be what they're going to do. Because, again, Jaden's the kind of guy, if you let him sit back there, he's either going to rip it or he's going to run away from you. Uh, so if you don't put some pressure on him and you let him sit back there and just pick and choose what he wants to do, he's going to do it. Uh, all day long he's gonna he's he's gonna gladly take anything that you can give him so it's gonna be interesting chess match to see if Jaden forces the Ravens to do some things that maybe they haven't been doing this year yeah and I think that I would probably anticipate the Ravens blitzing a bit more just to see if they can rattle Jaden early and see if that can carry over for the rest of the game but the thing is if they aren't successful and if Jaden is either getting the ball out quickly if he's extending plays scrambling out of there and especially using the short passing game that could mm-hmm. hurt the Ravens, but I would expect them to try some different things. They love to again blitz their DBs off the edge. They love to confuse in terms of sending guys to the line and then not bringing everybody. But you're right. I think the Don Mortendale Ravens. I mean, they were number one in blitz percentage, number one in blitz mm-hmm. everything. But ever since he left, they've kind of scaled back that blitzing, and it's been less of a blitzing effort and more of calculated blitzing as opposed to just live by the blitz, die by the blitz mentality, which which certainly was there over those yeah. Don Mortendale years. So. Going to be a really exciting game in Baltimore. Jaden Daniels versus Lamar Jackson. And be sure to keep it here on both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders for all of your insight leading up to game time. Be sure to subscribe to, again, both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders on YouTube. Also, follow along wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And, of course, we'll be back here tomorrow on your respective shows, both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders, bringing you all of the insight that you need to get ready for game time. So for David Harrison, Locked On Commanders, I'm Kevin Ostriker, Locked On Ravens, and we'll see you back here tomorrow on both Locked On Ravens and Locked On Commanders.